Hey everyone, my name is Shitich and today I am going to talk about the work we have done in developing different linear power flow models to optimize unbalanced distribution grids. Here is the outline for today's presentation. I will start with a brief introduction and motivation for our work. As you all know, there has been growing deployment of DERs such as rooftop solar PV in the recent past. This makes it challenging to efficiently operate the grid because DERs typically have uncertainty associated with their power injections. Also, they are not allocated evenly between the three phases of the distribution grid. This gives rise to a power quality issue called voltage unbalance. In an unbalanced network, we have negative sequence components that affect three phase induction machines, which are by far the most commonly found loads in the grid and they are also very expensive. Additionally, we also have zero sequence currents flowing between the neutral connections and this can lead to increase in network losses. In our work, we mitigate voltage unbalance by utilizing the reactive power capabilities of power electronic inverters. Most solar PV systems are typically connected to the grid via these inverters which can offer reactive power support. Since we are using existing equipment, this could be a very cost effective solution. So the next question is, how do we find the optimal reactive power injections? For this, we need to solve a three phase optimal power flow problem as shown here. Our objective can be to minimize either voltage unbalance or losses in the network, subject to various engineering constraints. However, this problem is challenging to solve for large systems especially due to the nonlinear nature of the power flow equations. As you can see from the table here, for a system with around 2200 nodes, it can take more than two hours to converge to a solution. So the research question we want to address now is how do we solve the OPF faster? There is already some existing work in this area where several approximations and relaxations have been used to improve computation time. However, there are some issues. For example, some of the relaxations are unable to find an AC feasible solution and they also do not scale well for large systems. They are also not flexible enough to consider delta connections or voltage dependent loads in the network. More importantly, several of these existing methods make limiting assumptions on the balanced nature of the grid which makes them unsuitable to analyze voltage unbalance. This brings us to the main contribution of our work, where we look at three different linearization methods that can be employed to optimize realistic and highly unbalanced grids. We use a successive approximation approach to converge to AC feasible solutions, and we then compare the performance of these methods with the nonlinear three-phase OPF version. Uh, furthermore, we also benchmark these methods against one of the most widely used linear approximations in distribution grid analysis, which is the three-phase version of Lindis flow. Now, we will look at the different linear approximations. Before that, just to give you a better idea of what exactly we are linearizing, here is the non-linear power flow equations in the polar coordinate frame. All parameters in the bold here are the optimization variables. As you can see, the power variables P and Q are nonlinear functions of our voltage variables. G and B here are the conductance and susceptance submatrices of the bus admittance matrix that basically defines the network topology. Like I mentioned before, we employ a successive approximation approach to converge to AC feasible solutions. There are basically four steps involved. We first start with an initial voltage estimate. The second step would be to solve the OPF problem, which we simplify by linearizing the power flow equations using the initial voltage estimate. Next, we check for convergence by measuring the deviation between the OPF solution and the initial voltage estimate. The final step is to update our voltage estimate before we solve the OPF again. If we terminate this approach after solving the OPF only once, then we essentially have an approximate solution to the OPF problem. One thing to note here is that since our objective function 
is still nonlinear, we cannot guarantee that the final solution is the most optimal one. Now we will look at the first linearization which is the first order Taylor approximation. This method is commonly used in transmission systems but not so much for distribution grids. We first get our initial voltage estimate by running a power flow problem. Next, we solve the OPF where the power flow is linearized around our initial voltage estimate. For this, you can see that we need to calculate the Jacobian which is basically the partial derivative of P and Q with respect to our voltage variables. The third step is to check for convergence which is the deviation of our new voltage phasor from the initial voltage phasor. Finally, we update the estimate by again running a power flow problem. The second linearization is the fixed point method. This method is commonly used to solve power flow in distribution grids but has not yet been used in the OPF framework. Different from the Taylor series approximation, we start here with a no load voltage solution. Next, we solve the OPF using the fixed point equation for power flow as shown here. Our voltage is essentially a linear function of the initial estimate, the Y connected power injections and the delta connected power injections. If you look at the right hand side of the equation, we have W which is the no load voltage that we already know and used in our initialization step. Then we have YLL which is the sub matrix of the bus admittance matrix when we ignore the slack bus. And we also have H which is the transformation matrix that converts all the delta connections to equivalent Y connection. The third step here is to check convergence which is similar to our previous method. And in our final step, we don't solve a power flow but instead directly update the voltage estimate by setting it equal to the OPF solution. Moving on to our final linearization method which is the forward backwards sweep. This method has be already been used to optimize distribution grids but only evaluated for small and simple test cases with constant power loads and only Y connections. The first step here uh, is similar to the fixed point method where we use the no load voltage estimate. Next, we solve the OPF using two sweeps which I'll explain using a simple phi node feeder. So the backward sweep basically applies KCL and calculates branch currents throughout the feeder. For the remote nodes I and L, you can see that we will use the initial voltage estimate to calculate the branch currents. Next, we perform the forward sweep which applies KVL to update voltages at all the nodes in the network. The next two steps to check the convergence and also to update the estimate are the same as the fixed point method. Now that we have defined the three linear models, let us evaluate their performance. For our case study, we are using a large taxonomic feeder from PNNL with more than 2200 nodes. There are close to 600 houses with single phase solar PV systems connected to this feeder. We will look at two objectives here. One is to minimize voltage unbalance at a critical three phase node 359 as shown by the orange dot. The other objective is to minimize losses throughout the network. To model the houses, we use actual load and PV data. We have six unique PV profiles from NREL and 30 unique load profiles from Pickens Street which are randomly assigned to all of these houses. Our first set of results are when we solve the OPF for a single snapshot of the system, which in this case is 4 p.m. We will first compare the objective values and the iteration count of all the methods with respect to the nonlinear three-phase OPF. As you can see, they all converge to similar values compared to the PP OPF and they do so within eight iterations. Especially when minimizing VUF, we can see that they all converge to zero in the first iteration itself. Another important thing to note here is that the fixed point method and the forward backward sweep method converge to identical solutions in each iteration. Next, we benchmark the approximation accuracy after the first iteration with respect to Lindis flow. So to do so, to do this, we have to use the OPF solution after the first iteration and run a power flow until convergence. Then we can find the average deviation of the power flow solution from the OPF solution per node. 
you can see that for both the objectives, the Taylor approximation gives us the best results. And the other two methods have better accuracy compared to Linda's flow. This is probably because the FOT OPF has a very good starting point since we run a power flow at the beginning of each iteration. Our next set of results are when we solve the OPF multiple times. In this case, we only minimize voltage unbalance at our critical node 359 and we do this every two hours throughout a single day. We can see from the objective values here that all three methods are able to reduce unbalance at our critical node to almost zero. If we look at the computation time, all three methods are significantly faster than TPOPF with the forward backward sweep converging to solutions in less than one minute. This is probably because it exploits the radial nature of the network, whereas the other two methods involve calculation of large matrices like the bus admittance matrix and the Jacobian. Moving on to the comparison of the approximation accuracy, uh, which we average over the 12 time instances, we again see here that the FOT OPF has the best performance followed by the fixed point and the forward backward sweep method. Finally, to conclude, the main goal of our work was to develop scalable linear approximations for op optimization of distribution grids that we can accurately use to analyze voltage unbalance. We used a successive approximation approach to converge to AC feasible solutions. Based on our simulation results, we saw that all three methods converge to very good solutions with considerable improvement in computation time. We also observed that the approximate solutions after the first iteration for all three methods had better accuracy than Linda's flow. In terms of future work, we plan to integrate more control variables into our OPF framework. This could either be electrical vehicles or battery storage systems. The plan here is to then investigate if the linear methods will still converge to good quality solutions. With that, I would like to thank everyone for your attention.